An early morning breakfast? I know, first time for everything. What's that? Okay, I'll tell him. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye. A former boss once told me that I should never underestimate the willingness of people to appear on camera. Now, he was referring to television, but filmmaking also attracts a lot of good people. But what if you write a part for a specific person? What if she doesn't want to do it? More on this as I invite you to come inside my movie. Adapting a half-hour radio play Good Grief It's Friday to a feature-length film came with many challenges, but also some wonderful opportunities to dig deeper into the character of the protagonist. I wanted to build a scene that continued to develop a reflection character while adding to the protagonist's world in a romantic interest. Grace became that character. She operates a local restaurant called The Farmhouse and harbors an unrequited love for Philip. Philip and Grace, uh, I believe, had kind of a friendship. I think they, they know each other very, very well, and, and Philip hangs out at the farmhouse a lot. Uh, I think I think she's kind of his, uh, kind of coming home. Like, she's, of all the crazy things in his life, the, the one thing that he can depend on is Grace and, and a great cup of coffee. So, you know, I just, I just think that there, there's, there's a... Uh, a warmth there between Grace and Philip. There's there's a level of comfort, and uh, you know I think as the the movie goes on, that that relationship doesn't change, but I think possibilities start to show themselves, and I think both of them start to realize that uh, you know it could it could be more than friendship, but you know the, the timing's just not there yet. I modeled the character after a local radio personality with whom I'd worked for many years. Tara Don Winstone, who works for Chorus Radio in Barrie, Ontario, is in real life Grace. She is kind, thoughtful, articulate, and intelligent. I created the character and the scene with Grace, then shared the idea with Tara, hoping that she would choose to take the part. I was surprised by her response. I've always wanted to be in a movie, and um, this was kind of, I, I've always thought this would be, it was a dream that I would never be able to make come true. Um, and so to get this opportunity to do it was definitely one of the things on my bucket list for the entertainment industry. So I just enjoyed it. I felt like I was, I felt like I was at Playland every day. It felt like Disney. It was like, I, every, it was such a good time to me. And I constantly kept having to pinch myself. And, and I, am I really? I'm in a movie. It was just really exciting. I love being a part of the process and meeting everyone and the camaraderie. And it was it was such a great experience. I, I so enjoyed it. So Tara agreed to help us make the movie and did a great job with the part. In a recent call, she and Chris Clark spoke about the pivotal scene. Well, the one where I'm sitting across from Philip, or the one, yeah, um, yeah. It 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 was so important to you. I know because we had a meeting. Uh, months before the movie started filming. And I know this scene was so pivotal to their relationship and I knew how important it was to you. So it was on my mind that I wanted to bring it to life the way that you saw it coming forward. And I, I just, it seemed, it, it was the type of scene where you're doing it and you feel like you're not reading a script. In your mind, you're not even, it felt very natural. It felt very, um, I could feel the tension. You know, the, my, the hairs in the back of my neck were standing up when they were going with that back and forth at the end with the, mm hmm And, you know, it was just sort of, um, it was probably my favorite scene because I felt like we had to say a lot without saying a lot. And that was the challenge in it. And, um, but yeah, first first and foremost, I was, I really wanted to play it the way that I think that, that you saw it because it was so important for their relationship that that scene be portrayed that way. You know, so that was, um, it was the most pressure I felt throughout the whole thing, just in the sense that, you know, we got to get this right. And, and um, also, you know, learning, it, I've never been in a movie before, or really acted, I've been in a commercial or two, but nothing, you know, never really acted on television or in a movie. So I, trying to not screw up the signs and the, it, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, you know, it's sort of don't move, don't look, don't move your hand, do this exactly the same way at the same time. and. 
So I feel like I was kind of learning as I went, but I, um, but yeah, I would say that that was probably my favorite scene to shoot because I felt the most challenged by it for sure. First of all, Tara, I think you did an amazing job. I, well, I really you. enjoyed that, that scene that we did together. And I know you're probably used to being up that early. Uh, <laughs> doing the radio. Fired. It's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I made sure that I got, you know, two or three hours sleep so that Philip was in the right state of, you know, being at the end of himself when we shot it. But anyway, I just, uh, yeah, I just loved the, the intensity and the back and forth of that scene, like you said, and I, probably that was the first time Grace had got Philip in a, in a chair to have, you know, kind of a real conversation. Yeah, and that's and even even at that point, Philip's all up in his head, and he's you know uh, this and that, and I don't really know what I'm doing anymore, and you know yeah. Grace just kind of throws another uh, curveball into that. You were so committed to that character, and I, I don't because I've never experienced this before. It really made me get out of my head, if that makes any sense, when I was doing because in my mind, I think I was still Tara Tara playing Grace. You know, and then you were so committed to it. It was like the first time I've really, I think, worked with a real actor that was, you know, really, you know, committed to the character. And it took me out of Tara. I, I, I felt like I really was probably the first time in that role, in that spot right there. I really was who I was playing. Mm. And it was because of I felt like you helped to draw that out. So made it a lot easier on me. <laughs> well, there's a lot of there's a lot of Tara and Grace, too. So that makes it easier. <laughs> red breast single pot still but perhaps a better choice for tonight yeah you're probably right want to talk about it i found a note under my door tonight it was from sadie the homeless woman what did she want the note said she had some information about rachel's death Really? Does she really know something, or is she just angling for another free meal? Uh, the note said she didn't want to keep the secret any longer. What does that mean? Don't know. By the time I found her, it was too late. Too late for what? Somebody got to her with a lead chaser. She was shot? Dead? You sure? The boys who put her into the body bag seem to think so. Oh, that's, that's awful. She used to tell me that she couldn't risk getting too drunk for fear of some bad guy taking advantage of her. I guess she had too much of a good thing tonight. It's just so frustrating when an innocent person dies because she got too close to a bad situation. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Chasing some nickel-dime thief just to pay the rent when I still don't know the truth about Ray? What's the point? Will you ever? How long has it been now? It's coming up on 10 years. Seems like forever, but feels like yesterday. Murphy calls it a cold case, but doesn't feel so cold to me. Of course not. Ray changed my life twice. My old man used to say that if I did anything, I should strive to be the best. <laughs> Turns out my reach did exceed my grasp. My report cards used to include the comment, keep up the fair work. Not that it was all that important, but by the time I was 16, I was trying to come to grips with the idea that what I was best at was being pretty average. Is being average all that bad? It is if you're my father's son. And then I met Ray in 11th grade English. You married your high school sweetheart? She used to sit in the desk right in front of me. She just emigrated from Malta a couple years earlier with her family, still trying to master the language. 
She was an exotic beauty with a killer smile. She'd taken to dropping her pencil in the hopes that I'd notice and pick it up for her. <laughs> That's sweet. I never noticed the pencil, but I sure noticed her. Ah, it was swell. This beautiful girl was interested in me. I was no longer average. The rest of my life was perfect. Until it wasn't. I need to know why. Weren't you on the force then? Yeah, that's the worst part about it. I should have been there to protect her. But the facts just didn't add up. The other car was stolen. The guy driving it disappeared into the crowd. Will you ever solve it? Who knows? What's rent money when the most important case of my life remains unsolved? It's important to your landlord. And wh what about Friday? Yeah, there it is. That sweet kid loves her job. You know, there's a whole lot more to her than most people think. I know. The rest of that scene accomplishes the goal of any scene, according to David Mamet. It makes what follows both surprising and inevitable. More about that next time when I invite you to come inside my movie.